Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Glad to be back with you with part three of this teaching. Um, what does it mean to be fruitful and multiply? And we went through what it means in part one and part two. As Christians, to be fruitful means to be like Christ. And to multiply, we multiply in the revelation of Christ, which is the knowledge of Christ. And we'll be multiplying throughout all eternity. We'll never stop multiplying because God is eternal and multiplication is eternal. So we'll be multiplying throughout all eternity. Multiplication never stops. But in order for this to happen, we have to go back to our first state. We were created spirit, soul, and God made from the earth us a body. But we were created in the spirit first. We were created from before the foundations of the world. And our humanity was taken from the foundations of the world. We were created in Christ in the spirit. And we had a soul. We were created in Christ in the spirit. And our humanity, when God created the foundations of the world, he took our humanity from the earth. And our humanity became a habitation for us in Christ. And when we were in Christ, in our humanity, our humanity came under the first fruit government of our Christianity. Because Christianity is 100% spiritual. It's not natural. Our humanity is the habitation of our Christianity. But yet, our Christianity is 100% independent of our humanity. It's the government of it. And Christianity is Christ, and Christ alone is Christianity. This is why Romans 9, 8 says that they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Because Christianity is not flesh, it's 100% spirit. But he goes on to say the children of the promise are counted as the seed. Because when we're born into the spirit of God, the spirit of God is the DNA of God. And the, the spiritual DNA of God makes us the spiritual children of God the Father through Christ Jesus. Because Christ is the DNA of God the Father. Your natural children in the flesh. How do you know that they're your biological children? Because they have your, your natural DNA in the flesh. Well, God defines his children in the spirit by the, us having, being in the DNA of his spirit. Okay, so we're his children according to the spirit. Those are the ones that are counted as the seed. Now, if you have not been born of the spirit, I don't care how biblically religious you are. You are not his because the letter was given to the mind of the flesh while being dead in our sins and trespasses in the spirit. When he told us, when we were put in our humanity, and our humanity came under the first fruit government of our Christianity, which is Christ, we were told to be fruitful and multiply. We were already fruitful. We just had to abide in Christ so we could continually multiply in the abundant life of Christ. Okay? I kind of lost my point for a second. But it, it, we continue to abide in the in, we can multiply in the abundance of Christ. There was not the Bible of Christ. See, we didn't need the Bible of Christ because we had Christ. The Bible didn't exist at this time. The Bible came after our fall from grace, not before our fall from grace. So when we fell from the grace of God in the spirit, which is Christ, and our humanity lost its present, uh, its uh, fruitfulness, its preservation, which is the fruit of Christ, we were totally outside of the uh, of the grace of Christ. We were lost. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. So God gave us in the flesh the letter of Christ while being dead in our sins and trespasses in the spirit. But the letter of Christ, which is the Bible, was only for a season of in time until the sin debt would be paid and we could once again receive the spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of salvation. 
Now, we're in the dispensation of the Spirit. That means the dispensation of the, of the biblical church is actually over. We're in the dispensation of the gospel body. You have to be born of the Spirit. Joining a church ain't going to cut it. That's an act of the flesh. You have to be born back into Christ's Spirit, and that alone is an eternal work of the Spirit. That alone is an eternal work of the Spirit, and it, it puts us back in the eternal work of the Spirit because He created us in the beginning, spirit, soul, and body. Only He in, the, in this end can restore us back to what we were in the end, restore us back to what we were originally created to be in the beginning. That power is in His hands alone, no one else's. No church can do that. No scripture can do that. No preacher can do that. Christ alone did it in the beginning. And Christ alone has to restore us back to our original state in the end, which is him. He's our originality. He's our originality. He is what makes us original. Now, if, if you, you just want to be common, that's easy. Just go join a church. That's common. But if if you desire the uncommon life of Christ to live through you, then the Lord himself is going to separate you from the church mentality because it's it's a hindrance. You had you, you have to come out of that biblical faith mentality because that was only for a season and a time. That's over. We're back in that state where we're commanded to be fruitful and multiply. Okay, John 8, 31, 32. John 8, 31, 32. It says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And to know the truth is to know him. And the truth shall make you free. It's going to make you free from the letter. It's going to make you free from the flesh. And you're going to once again experience the abundant, the abundant life of Christ in the spirit. You will once again be free because due to the fall, we became prisoners of these temples. Our manhood and womanhood became limited to these temples because we were dead in our sins and trespasses. We couldn't see beyond the flesh, which was our limitation. But through being born again, and we enter into, through being born back into the image of Christ in the spirit, and we enter into the first fruit living of the spirit, we once again live beyond these temples. We once again live beyond these temples because we've gone back to our original state in the spirit and put these temples back under the first fruit government of the spirit, which is a work of Christ alone in the spirit. We are the beneficiaries of that work, but we have neither part nor lot in that work. So we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Make us free, not set us free, because whatever sets you free can catch you again. But when you're made free, See, we, we were made free from sin. So sin can never hold us again. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. It is the spirit that makes you fruitful. The flesh profits nothing. Because Christianity is not of the flesh, it's of the spirit. The words I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. You see, our faith will manifest through the flesh, but our faith is not of the flesh. Okay. Uh, he says, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. In, in other words, they are the knowledge of life. They are the fruit of life. He did not say the words I have written unto you are spirit and they are life. With the written word, we were biblically active as male and female. With the living word is where we become fruitful as gospel men and women okay we were created men and women we were made male and female the male is the habitation of the man and the female is the habitation of the woman okay at the end of this your humanity goes back from the earth where it was taken and the man and the woman goes before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged. Goes before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged. So John 63 says, it is the spirit that makes alive, the flesh profits nothing. The words I speak unto you, 
they are spirit and they are life. He did not say the words I have written unto you are spirit and they are life. He said the words I speak unto you. He speaks unto his own by revelation of the spirit, which is a mystery to the mind of the flesh. They can't receive it. The mind can receive the letter of Christ, but only those born back into gospel manhood and womanhood can receive the revelation of Christ because that's spiritual. The flesh can't receive the things of the spirit. Neither can the flesh understand the things of the spirit. Our humanity was a habitation. Our humanity was designed for the habitation and manifestation of our Christianity. That's the purpose of our humanity. This is why our humanity has to put has to be put back under the first fruit government of true Christianity so that a lost and dying world can get the manifestation of it. All right. So that a lost and dying world can get the manifestation of true Christianity and souls can be born and built back up in the kingdom of God and lose this foolish church mentality of thinking that you are going to build up the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God doesn't need building. The kingdom of God is the spirit of God. Does the spirit of God need to be built up or do we need to be built up by the spirit of God? <laughs> you see the church mentality? This is why it has to go. Because it's the flesh boasting itself. It's the flesh thinking it's big enough and bold enough to do something that it actually cannot do. All right. So he says the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. James 4, 7 says, submit yourself to God. Now, if the words he speaks unto us are spirit and they are life, they are the knowledge of life, they are the fruit of life, and this is where we multiply in the abundant life of Christ, then James 4, 7 says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Where are you submitted? Are you submitted to your, your spiritual headship, which is Christ in the spirit? Or you submit it in the flesh to a biblical head in the Bible-based church. Who are you submitted to? Christ in the spirit or an ordained minister, biblical minister in the flesh? Where are you submitted? Because where you submit it, going to tell the tale because the fruit ain't going to lie. If you submit it to a biblical head in the flesh, you're fruitless. If you submit it to Christ in the spirit, you're fruitful. Not only fruitful, but going to multiply in that fruit. And it's going to be evident for all to see. It's going to be evident for all to see. So we have to submit ourselves uh, unto God in the, through Christ Jesus in the spirit. And the devil will flee from us according to the first fruit living of the spirit. Because Christ is our living. The fruit of the spirit is where the spiritual man and the woman, woman live on planet earth. They, we live in the fruit of the spirit. Okay, and multiply according to the uh, the life of Christ in the Spirit, because He's our abundant life. He's our He's our He's our true life. Ain't no life outside of Him. The flesh outside of the Spirit can exist, but it cannot live. We live through our humanity. Outside of us as spiritual men and women living through our humanity, we're only substituting it in. We're only existing in our humanity, okay? Our humanity was made for a habitation and manifestation of true Christianity. So submit yourself to God through Christ Jesus in the spirit, which is a work of the spirit, and the devil will flee from you through the manifestation of the fruit of the spirit. You see, because when you're alive as a spiritual man or woman, the living have power over the dead, and Satan is death. Well, life has power over death. Life has power over death, and Christ is our life. He's our life and our living, okay? He's our fruitfulness and our multiplication. He's all things unto us. He's made all things unto us, but we were made nothing unto him. This is why he says, apart from him, we can do nothing, because apart from him, we are nothing. Now, 
Now, what does that mean? Apart from him, we can do nothing. We cannot carry out any eternal good. Oh, we can do human good. We can do human good. Like uh, helping according to the flesh and doing nice things for people according to the flesh. But salvation is not of the flesh, it's of the spirit. I don't want to see people get fat in the flesh and bust hell wide open in the spirit. No, I want them delivered. People have to get delivered, especially from the Bible-based church mentality. Especially from the Bible-based church mentality. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 11. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 11. Now, this is dealing with our, not our prosperity. This is dealing with our provision after we've been established in our prosperity. All right. First Peter 5, 6 through 11. It says to, because the Christian has two inheritances. He has his eternal inheritance, which is Christ. He's restored back to his eternal inheritance, which is Christ in the spirit. And when the flesh comes under the first fruit, government of the spirit, the Lord has already set the time to add back to him or her their material, financial and material inheritance. He's going to add it back to them. You see, Satan robbed it from us at the fall. And Christ res restores both back unto us. He restores both back unto us. But your financial and material, to material inheritance in the flesh has to come under the first fruit stewardship which is your co-ownership, which is your joint heir with Christ in the fruit of the Spirit. You see, which is where your living is in the Spirit. You have to live beyond what you possess, not subject to what you possess, because when you become fruitful, your wealth as a Christian, which means Christ-like, make you independent of the financial and material wealth you possess as a Christian. See, this is what makes Christianity so special. The world is defined by what they have. The Christian, the eternal wealth of the Christian makes them independent from what they possess. Because if you are defined by what you possess, then you don't possess it. Demonic spirits are using those possessions to possess you. Okay. Freedom gives you the ability to enjoy the material good of the world. But if you're defined by the material good of the world, then you can't enjoy it because you're a slave to it. Okay. First Peter 5, 6 and 11. It says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt us in due time. I want you to notice something that it says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Prosperity comes from the mind of God. The financial and provision, the financial and material provision of the world comes from the hand of God. Why does prosperity come from the mind of God? Because as spiritual men, men and women, we were created in the mind of Christ in the spirit. OK, we were created in the mind of Christ in the spirit. That's where we that's where we were created for fellowship with him in the spirit. We were created in the mind of Christ in the spirit and that's prosperity. And uh we were made from we were made male and female from the earth and added to us the provision of the spirit. So the provision of Christ, the provision of the spirit comes from the hand of God. The prosperity of Christ comes from the mind of God. So prosperity is for the spiritual man and woman. Provision is for the natural male and female. But he gives it back to us, both of our inheritances, in divine order. The Christ man is restored back to his prosperity first, which is Christ. And the male and female brought back under the eternal government of the first fruit man and woman second. Then your financial, material, the uh, your financial and material work, wealth will be put under the stewardship of the fruit of the spirit second because you're operating in your co-ownership rights you you now have the legal means 
once you, you enter into the living of the Spirit, to steward and truly own the financial and material wealth of the Spirit. Because you're restored back to, to legal ownership. There are spiritual laws that govern this world. There are spiritual laws that govern this world. And those that don't have the legal means to, to possess the financial and material good of Christ, it's subject to loss. It's subject to loss. You may get away with it for a second, but it's subject to loss. Okay. That he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. That's the cares of the flesh. Well, we're set free from the cares of the flesh when we're living in the first fruit independence of Christ in the spirit. Now we can endure in the flesh as God is establishing us in the kingdom of God in the spirit so that we can become fruitful in, uh, in the life of Christ and Christ through us can continually multiply and, and we can experience more and more his abundant life. All right. Because the Christ life is a gift to us. Okay, casting all you care upon him for he cared for you. The Lord wants us to live free from care. Not living slaves to care. Not being slaves to care. Be sober. Now, this is not talking about alcohol. You don't have to drink. It's not, it, it's, it's not talking about wine. It's not talking about being drunk. Because you don't have to drink wine to be drunk. If you're, if you're biblical in the flesh with, with, without the light of God, of Christ's gospel in the spirit, then you don't have that new wine. You're drunk on that, on that old wine. But when Christ opens your spiritual eyes to see your true condition as he sees it, your true spiritual condition as a fallen man or woman, as opposed to you seeing yourself in the flesh from a biblical perspective or a pastoral perspective, or from a perspective from which people see you, which does not matter. It only matters how Christ sees you. To see your true condition, then you sober up. But just like a drunk, a lot of people, they can't handle being sober because they can't deal with their true spiritual condition. So they go back to that, they go back to that old wine. Jesus said when, when one takes new wine, they taste that newness of the wine of the gospel of the spirit. They're going to go back to the letter because they say that old wine is better because that's what they're used to. We're born in the flesh, dead in our sins and trespasses in the spirit. All we know is religion. So religion tastes better to the dead. Religion tastes better to someone spiritually dead than deal with the conviction of that new wine. All right. So be sober. Be vigilant, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, your adversary, the devil, but he's a, he doesn't come as the devil. He comes as Christ, but he's antichrist. The devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Seeming, seeing whom he may devour. And let's understand something. The devil is very biblical. He is very biblical. He's biblically savvy. He knows how to use the letter very cleverly to make you think you're actually getting the gospel, but you're not getting the gospel. You're getting the light, you're getting the letter without the gospel. He is biblically savvy and he is very good at unlawfully using that book. This is why I constantly warn uh, the biblically brainwashed about going from the letter to the light so they can begin to walk by faith and, and, and stop just existing in that drunken spiritual state by sight. Um, you have to be born again. You have to be born again. Stop trying to make church members. Stop trying to join somebody's church. Jesus didn't say you have to join a church or you can no wise understand the kingdom of God. He says, unless you are born of the spirit, you can in no wise see nor enter into the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is the spirit of God. And being born of the spirit is an eternal work of God himself. Is an eternal work of God himself. Now your flesh can join a church. That's a work of the flesh. But only Christ 
in Christ alone can take your spirit and cause it to be reborn back into his spirit, where you're back in your original state from before the foundations of the world. Because Christ was before this world and you were created a spiritual being in him from before the foundations of the world. That's your original state. So your humanity can once again become a habitation for your, your Christianity, which is Christ. And then the world will get a manifestation through your humanity of the true light of true Christianity. Of true Christianity, which is the gospel, because Christ is the gospel and the gospel alone is Christ. Okay. It says, nine says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that your same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren in the world. Resist steadfast how? How do we resist the devil? We resist him steadfast in the faith. Well, 1 Corinthians 13, 5 says to examine yourselves to see whether you be in the faith. Who is the faith? The faith is Christ, and Christ alone is the faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, whatsoever is not a faith is sin. So if you are resi to resist him, uh, whom resists steadfast according to the faith, then you have to resist him according to Christ, because Christ is your power over him. Christ is your power over him. What did we just read in James 4, 7? Submit yourself to God through Christ Jesus, resist the devil, and he's going to flee from you. When you submit it to, to the image of Christ in the spirit through being restored back to his image, the devil will flee from you according to the fruit of the spirit. Because that's the, that's the, fruiting of, that's the fruit of the living of Christ's spirit. And once you become alive, he's going to be, begin to retreat. And you, Christ is re giving you back, he's giving you back your liberty, which is your prosperity. He's giving you back your liberty, which is your prosperity. So whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in our brethren that are in the world, that are in the world, but are not of the world. They're in the world, but they're not of the world. Remember, we shall have bonus in the day of judgment. For as he is, so are we in this world. So when we stand before him, we're going to look just like him. We're going to look just like him. We're going to be looking right in the eyes of judgment and we're going to look just like him. So we're going to have bonus in the day of judgment. But if you ain't like him on earth, in the flesh, you ain't going to be like him when you leave this flesh. What you think you're going to see? You're going to see judgment. You're going to see a judgment that you don't want to see. But the God of all grace, listen to this, the God of all grace, who had called us unto eternal glory, he's called us unto eternal glory, our original state. We need to listen to this carefully. The God of all, but the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while. And the word suffer means to endure. To endure care in the flesh as we're being established in the kingdom of God in the spirit. Okay? As we're being built back up as men and women in the spirit and our humanity coming back under the first fruit government of the spirit so that a lost, dead, and dying world can get an eternal manifestation of the light of Christ's spirit. So, so they can be able to distinguish the true Christ from Antichrist, be able to distinguish life from death, be able to distinguish the light from the letter, all right? But after that, you have suffered a while. The Lord himself is going to make you perfect, that's spiritually mature, make you perfect, Establish you to turn com to the word established means to turn completely around. Strengthen you. That's in spiritual knowledge and power. That's where you become fruitful. That's what that means to strengthen you in spiritual knowledge and power. What did he say? Be fruitful and multiply. Well, this is where you become fruitful and will begin to multiply. You're going to become fruitful. 
in the life of Christ because he will become your life and your living and you're going to multiply. You're going to multiply in the revelation of Christ. All right. Strengthen you in spiritual knowledge and power and settle you. That's to lay the foundation to cause you to stand, to eternally stand because you are, you will be eternally established as a Christian. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And the reason it says, but the God of all grace, who had called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, endured, he's going to add your eternal inheritance to you. I mean, I'm sorry. Once you've been established in your eternal inheritance, he's going to add your financial and material inheritance to you. He's going to add it to you, but you're going to have it legally. You're going to have it legally. Uh, you're going to receive it first by re revelation of the spirit as a man or woman. And you're going to, and once you receive it by revelation of the spirit, it's going to quicken the soul and make alive the mortal body according to the fruit of the spirit. Because that, that which you have as a spiritual man or woman has to come under the first fruit living of the spirit. It has to come under the government of it. And then at some point, as spiritual men and women, uh, uh, we're going to see the manifestation of it in our malehood and femalehood. Okay, this is why uh, Hebrews 11.1 1 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of what we do not see. It is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what we do not see. Your, um, your expectation, according to the fruit of the Spirit, comes from your revelation as a man or woman in the Spirit. So your expectation is something that governs your malehood and femalehood. So whatever comes against what God has revealed to you in the flesh, you're living beyond opposition as a man or woman already having it in the spirit. Okay, so what you're going to see in your malehood or femalehood is a demonstration of the manifestation of the spirit of what you already have. You see, we're not, we're not in expectation of what we don't have. We're in expectation of what we already have. Because you have it as a spiritual man or woman, and then you see the manifestation of it in your malehood or femalehood. All right. Um, okay, yeah. It's so we will be financially stable. It's okay for a Christian to desire financial stability, but not financial freedom, financial security, or financial freedom. The world pursues financial freedom, financial security. The Christian secures finances and it's called financial stability. We don't go after money. We don't, we don't go after our, our inheritance. Our inheritance will come to us and the Lord is going to add it to us because we're in purpose knowledge. We're living in purpose. We're no longer simply existing as male and female for provision. We're living in as gospel men and women of purpose. Okay, uh, and that is the end of part three. That is the end of part three of this three-part teaching. Uh, what does it mean to be fruitful and multiply? And I was glad to be the vessel of light whom the Lord used to bring this uh, eternal work to all those who it was predestined for. Uh, I love you and I thank you and I'll see you in the next teachings. Love you in the Lord. See you next time.